everyone. Thanks for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to talk about Tinkercad. It's a free website. It's a great site if you want students to create their own 3D prints. And another great thing about this website is that students can create their accounts, but with the teacher account, you can create a class code. And with that class code, students can link their accounts to your account. All right, enjoy. So here's the Tinkercad website. If you are interested in creating an account, you, can, you have two options. You can go to Start Tinkering Now or Sign Up. Both options will lead you to a new window that looks like this. It's going to ask you your birth date. And then I'm going to click Next. And then it's going to ask you to put a, an email that they can contact you with and a password that you want. And then you would go right here to create an account. You can leave this checked or unchecked. It's basically saying that it's going to email you newsletters and special promotions whenever they come up. So whenever you're ready and you filled in the email and password, you're going to click create an account. And this will then take you to your teacher dashboard. So within the dashboard, uh, not only can you create new designs for yourself, but you can also get your students to create designs and you'll be able to have control of all their designs once they've saved it on their accounts. So if I go to teach, I can create a new code. And with that new code, I can have my students copy it once they have an account up. And once they type in this code, they will now be a part of my account. And once they're a part of my account, I can go up here to the top right. And right now it's a robot for me, but you can change the icon to whatever you'd like. You can go here and go down to moderate kids. And that's where you can see all your students' accounts. And being able to see your student accounts you can change their passwords. You can have a little bit more control of their accounts. But also, you can see all of their designs. So right here, Kids Activities, you can see that my students have been using Tinkercad quite a bit. And you can kind of see what your students are creating. And not only that they're, that they're creating, but they can also modify. So Tinkercad has different examples that others have created, and students can drag those STL files into Tinkercad, and they can modify the current STL file that they that they downloaded so that it becomes one of theirs. And I'm just going to build something pretty simple. All right. And at the beginning of the year, I had a project for my students to do, and it was to create a nameplate or a name badge. So I'm just going to create my name here. I'm just going to change the text to blue. That doesn't mean that it's going to be blue when it prints out. I only have white filament right now. And I use white filament because it allows students to paint or use Sharpies on them. The blue color is just for me to know that it's just a different color from the box that I just created. So in the text, I'm going to write my name. And I'm going to double check to make sure that that text is on that box. And if it was not on the box, this little tree or arrow pointing up, if you click on it, it'll raise it off the box, or you can bring it back down onto the box. So these little points here allows you to change the object that you loaded onto your work plane. So right now I'm going to make my red box a little thinner. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And as you can see, as I brought the box down, 
I will need to also bring my text down. And again, grab that tree or point, pointer going up. And I'm just going to bring it down to that little box. All right. I like the way that looks. And now, when I'm done with this, so I'm going to click on export and go to .stl. That's going to save the image or the object that your students created. It's going to save it into a uh, 3D printable file, .stl. So I'm going to do that. And you can look at your download files. If you use Safari, you can look up here. But if you look in your download files, it will be there. So there's my downloads. I'm going to bring that down. So I'm going to print this name badge on my Cetus 3D. And this is the slicing software for my Cetus 3D printer. So now all I have to do is go to my downloads and make sure that it says .stl. If it says anything else, the 3D printer will not understand what you just dragged onto its plate. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag this right in here, and there's my nameplate. Don't worry if whatever your students make is huge. You can always scale it down on any of the slicing software. So I'm going to click on mine. And this is my scaling button right here. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm just going to scale it down just a little bit because I don't want it to use too much of my filament. So I want to just do a small nameplate about that size. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to make sure uh, the Cetus 3D printer has this error check. So I'm going to fix errors just in case. And it looks like there's no errors. And now I'm going to go to my printer setting, settings. The nozzle that I use on the Cetus 3D, it's a 0.4 millimeter. The cool thing about three, is the Cetus 3D printer, it has three nozzles, a 0.2 millimeter, a 0.4 millimeter that I'm using, and a 0.6. The 0.2 millimeter is more for like very fine prints that you want to do, something with really, really good detail. 0.4 and 0.6, uh, it's going to be a faster print and more for prototyping. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the quality of this to normal because I'm not worried about the details of this. And I'm going to do the infill and I'm going to change that to about 13%. And I'm going to have no raft checked. That means it's going to have a nice little raft, something that I'll have to take off, and I'll show that to you guys once it's done printing. I clicked no support because I don't want any support. And usually when you 3D print something that's tall or an action figure and their arms are just hanging out, you're going to want to have support on that. So anything that's kind of away from the actual build, you're going to want support. And since there's nothing really sticking out, I don't really have a need for any support on this now, part. Before I hit confirm, if you look at the parts here, the three layers, surface, and the angle, I didn't mess with the uh, settings in this area or in this area. The only things I've messed with are the bed level settings. And I can show you that in a few minutes too. And this is the bed level settings that I was talking about. You have nine points. And you have to adjust every point. So I'm just going to leave it this way. I only set it once and I haven't had to set it again. So I'm just going to confirm that. If I wanted to try a different filament, I would click withdraw and that will heat up the nozzle to a temperature to where the plastic that's currently in there melts and you can pull the whatever color filament you have at that time out and then you can put a new filament whether it's glow in the dark or a different color and you can put that in by hitting extrude.
So back to the printer setting. I'm happy with the settings right now. I'm going to go ahead and click print. So right now, the printer is slicing the object. Once it finishes it, you'll see what your print is going to look like. This error is just telling me that I need to be aware that my filament's almost out. And I'm going to continue because I know that it's not going to take up all the filament that I do have right now. So I'm going to click yes. I want it to continue. Now these blue lines that you see outside of the object, that's the raft. That's the support material that I want so that I know that it sticks to the bed. I'm going to click OK. It's going to take about 39 minutes and 48 seconds. I'm going to hit OK. And now all I have to do is wait for the nozzle to reach the right temperature around 210 degrees Celsius. And once this temperature reaches around that temperature, the printer will start to go. So the Cetus 3D has finished printing. So I'm just going to take my scraper and I'm not going to touch the build plate. I'm just going to kind of gently pop it right off, just like so. And there's the 3D print. Now those light blue lines that you saw in Cetus slicing software, it's the raft. So I can also just Take the raft off, the support. All right, so there's my name tag. Looks pretty good. If you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.